You know, there have been many business people over the years, some of them were not even religious, who understood about Malachi 3, and they have actually tithed. Some of them are Christians, but some weren't. You see some well-known names here on this list. And God has blessed them. You see, God makes this promise and blesses people who tithe, not because we're worthy. We'll never be worthy of God's blessing, okay? We'll never be worthy of God taking care of us. It's all through Jesus. It's Jesus' worthiness and His righteousness that God blesses us. But God makes a promise because He wants us to learn to know Him and to trust Him and see that He really is the one who's supplying all of our needs. Beautiful. Principle number three, giving with the right motive opens our hearts to receive spiritual and material blessings from God. Turn over with me now, if you would, to the book of Luke. And in Luke chapter 6, God gives us a beautiful picture here of this principle of how to relate to our money and possessions. Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. This is God. He's inviting us here to go ahead and and honor Him and, and put Him first in our life and to have our affections on Him and not on the material things of this world. Luke 6 and verse 38. Jesus speaking here. Jesus says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. For men will give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet, that means whatever you give, with all it shall be measured to you again. See, many people think the tithing system means that God's going to make them wealthy. There are many churches today that are teaching what some people call the prosperity gospel. That means that, you know, you give God and God's going to make you wealthy. I've heard with my own ears. Preacher after preacher saying that it's God's will that everybody be wealthy. It's God's will that everybody be financially successful. Folks, it's God's will that we all know Him. It's God's will that we have a deep, intimate relationship with Him. But the Bible says that there's always going to be the poor with us. There's always going to be those who maybe don't have as much as someone else. Some of it may be by mismanagement, but some of it may just be the reality of the life they live in. So God isn't promising He's going to make us wealthy. He's not promising He's going to give us all kinds of riches. What He's saying is that as we give from our heart, because we're looking to God as our Creator, as the source of everything good, God is blessing us in our heart with peace. God is blessing us in our heart with pleasure of knowing that we're honoring the Lord. God is blessing us in our heart as God uses people and circumstances to bless us. There is far more pleasure in seeing God do something for you than anything we could ever do for ourselves. Far more pleasure, far more joy, because it's just so awesome to see something happen that you know only God could orchestrate. So God is wanting us to understand this. As we give, because God has won our hearts, God will give back to us. It may be just like it's happened to my dear wife and I. All of your prayers... And all of your concerns has meant more to me than being a millionaire in this world. All of the love that we have received and knowing that people genuinely care, to me, that is a a fulfillment. God says, give and it will be given back to you. Great and, and wonderful God's blessings. Turn to Mark chapter 10, if you would, back one book. And notice what else God says here. Mark chapter 10. You know, as a young Christian, and I read this, I got all excited, this passage right here. And uh, it just shows how awesome God is in our relationship with Him. Okay, Mark 10 and verse 28. Okay, Jesus has just been talking to the rich young ruler, and the rich young ruler loved his money more than he loved Jesus, and so he turned away sorrowfully. But notice what it says in verse 28, Mark 10. Then Peter began to say to Jesus, Lo, we've left all and followed you. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no one who has left house or brother or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake in the Gospels, but he or she shall receive a hundredfold when... Now, in this time, houses, brethren, sisters, mothers, children, and lands with persecutions, God says there are still going to be hardships and in the world to come, eternal life. Folks, when you walk with Jesus and Jesus is in in your heart and you love Him, it is a joy and a pleasure to honor Him in every area of our lives. Folks, heaven begins on this earth. That's because the substance of heaven is a connection with our Creator and our God. It's beautiful and precious. And so Jesus gave and gave because He knew God's beautiful principle. Principle number four 
Giving enables us to have the deep satisfaction of advancing His kingdom. You know, the tithe is specifically set aside in the Bible for gospel ministry. The tithe goes to pay the, the gospel workers, not just here, but all over the world. We have the satisfaction that while we're at our job working and we're returning our tithe, that God is blessing others because we've been faithful in honoring God with their tithe. There's going to be people that come up to you in God's kingdom and they say, they're going to say, I never knew you. Or, you never knew me. But you know, thank you. That you are faithful in honoring God with the first fruits of your labors. And I was one that was blessed. I was one that was encouraged. I was one that was taught the gospel and the truth about God. Thank you. Folks, what pleasure there will be throughout all eternity in the hearts of the saved who have had that joy of seeing others redeemed through their faithfulness to the Lord. Principle number five. There is no greater motivation to give than the cross. Now this is what I believe, the real substance of this beautiful teaching. You know, when Jesus saw our helpless condition, He didn't turn away and say, it's going to cost me too much. When God the Father saw the mess that we were in, knowing what it would cost to redeem us, God the Father didn't turn away and say, you know what, they're not worth it. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit came together and developed that beautiful principle. They've already, it says it's from eternity past. They've already had it in their being. But they brought it forward that they would sacrifice everything. They would not hold anything back. God has given Him whole self. Jesus has given Him, 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 whole, him whole, His whole self for you and for me because of His love in His heart for us. And so as we behold the giving of our Creator, as we behold the sacrifice of our Creator, you see, in in places like America, we don't know what sacrifice is anymore. We don't know what it is to give up something in some sacrificial way. It's so often if we do give, we give out of our abundance. And God wants us as we behold His sacrifice and His incredible giving. And He's emptied His whole being. It says in Philippians 2, He emptied Himself in order to save us. It motivates us and draws our affections out after Him. And it moves us to find pleasure in being faithful in our tithes and our offerings. That's such a beautiful principle that God has given us because he, heaven has made the supreme gift. Now, sacrificing for God's cause, principle number six, teaches us deeper lessons of trust. You know, God doesn't always take care of everything in the timing that we want Him to. God doesn't always make everything go smoothly in our life. I used to get mad at God all the time because I didn't understand the relationship thing. I thought it was like, God, you know, you saved me now. Just kind of, you know, make everything go good for me. I didn't understand because I didn't know what relationships were. But as I began to heal and God began to heal me, I began to understand it's about this relationship. And so God, to draw us closer into a deeper trust and a deeper fellowship, sometimes allows us to go through hardships. And sometimes God allows us to go through hardships financially. And sometimes God allows us to go through times where it doesn't seem like God's honoring His promise. But I'll tell you what, folks. There is no sweeter joy than to trust God when it doesn't seem like God is faithful. There is no sweeter pleasure that we can bring to the heart of God than to trust Him when He is allowing us to be tried for His honor and His glory. You know, my-